Although it never achieved the same level of sales as home console rivals Atari ST and Amiga, Acorn Computer's Archimedes still enjoyed an impressive library of exclusive games of which every fan of classic gaming should be aware. Thanks to its powerful CPU and colourful graphics, the Arc gave its owners their own mirror universe of games to enjoy encompassing every genre. By the mid-80s, British company Acorn Computers was riding the crest of a wave for having secured a contract to produce an education-orientated computer, the BBC Micro. However, the ever-evolving nature of technology dictates that nothing ever stays the same for long, and by 1985 the 8-bit BBC Micro, which had put the company so prominently on the map in 1981, was beginning to look hopelessly old-fashioned when compared with such competition as Commodore 16-bit Amiga. Following that success that it enjoyed in the education sector and propped up by the shareholder PC manufacturer Olivetti, Acorn began ploughing research funds into a successor to the Beeb. The first stage of the project that became the legendary Archimedes was on the way. Dissatisfied with the microprocessor chips that were available at the time, the engineers at Acorn took the rather courageous decision to boldly design their own using a fashionable new approach called the Reduced Instruction Set Computer, called RISC. The RISC design mythology involves removing instructions that are infrequently used in order to create a chip that is less complex. The result of Acorn's efforts, the Acorn RISC machine, ARM, which was later changed to the Advanced RISC machine chip, was one of the best performing chips of its generation and about four times as fast as the 68,000 that powered machines such as the Amiga. In fact, the performance of the finished chip surprised even Acorn engineer Sophie Wilson, who reveals that what we didn't expect was that a chip designed for 4 MHz would run at 6 MHz, and with some tweaking to critical pass, 8 MHz. The next surprise for the designers was that they had difficulty measuring the power usage of the first arm as it drew so little. The ARM chip became the heart of Acorn's new machine and thanks to its efficient design it went on to become the lasting legacy of Acorn computers. For example, the ARM is now the most common CPU found in embedded applications such as mobile phones. And it didn't stop there, because Acorn also created a set of powerful custom chips to power the graphics, sound and input output. The graphics architecture lacks some of the Amiga's more elaborate features, such as a blitter, copper chip and hardware sprites, but it was still capable of matching the Amiga's sprite plotting prowess thanks to the far faster processor. The lack of copper chip was apparent in some conversions of 16-bit colour games, such as Gods and Twin World, as they lacked the colourful graduated skylines of the Amiga versions. Another limitation of the fixed palette in 256 colour modes which gave games a look that favoured primary colours. However, the most common gaming mode of 320x256 pixels with 256 colours still exceeded the baseline capabilities of most of the competition. After a false start involving a US-based design team, Acorn Computers was left with a serious problem. Because the hardware would be finished a long time before a potential operating system, the engineers decided to develop a stopgap system based partially on the BBC Micro operating system, MOS. The result, known as Arthur, allowed consumers and developers to get a glimpse of the amazing hardware in action, but compared to the operating systems of the time, it was a major disappointment. It didn't even offer multitasking. Backwards compatibility with BBC MOS gave its existing developers a head start in understanding the machine, but limited the architecture decisions that designers could make. An additional problem was that any later OS would have to be backwards compatible with Arthur or else it would risk alienated developers. In 1987, Acorn released the first Archimedes branded workstations. The A310 was at the top of the range with an 8 MHz processor and 1 MB of RAM, while the somewhat cheaper A305 came with 512K. Although not massively more expensive than other high-end workstations of that time, the relatively inflated price did become an issue that dodged the platform throughout its life. The machines shipped with the Arthur operating system's ROMs fitted internally, 
and the ROM-based operating system was a unique feature that made operation without a hard disk a much more reasonable proposition than it was on other workstations. Selling a basically incomplete and fairly expensive computer would have been an uphill struggle for most companies, but Acorn had several unique advantages. First, its monopoly in British education guaranteed thousands of sales from the beginning. Second, there already existed a network of user groups and high street magazines that viewed the Archimedes as the natural successor to the BBC Micro. The reactions from the technology press were mostly positive as the machine was truly one of the fastest money could buy. The fact that it was a true 32-bit system was also a major selling point. Most of the first commercial game releases were basic. In more ways than one, some of them were written in basic but they began to demonstrate the viability of the Archimedes as a gaming platform. Alongside the first simple platformers and horizontal shooters, the first ports from other platforms began to appear. Ports were a good idea for the relatively small Archimedes market as the asset development such as graphics, level data and even the packaging had already been completed. Archimedes owners were lucky enough to be able to play some of the big multi-format hits but they also made most of the some good games that had been only low-key successes on their native platform. Finally, about a year after the first hardware release, in 1988 Acorn bought out the successor to Arthur. RISC OS 2 was an operating system equivalent in quality to the hardware upon which it ran. Wilson confirmed that the relief felt among owners was shared by Acorn computers. The system really only became what we had desired with the release of the RISC OS. Although RISC OS offered multitasking and advanced features such as scalable outline fonts, it was surprisingly efficient. The sheer speed at which the graphical interface operated was a benefit that was quite difficult to convey in pictures. The combination of speedy hardware and powerful operating system meant that Acorn's Archimedes was now an excellent all-rounder for serious applications. In a classroom environment, this meant that a basic Archimedes could be used to teach page layout in one lesson and then music composition or multimedia work in the next. Pieces of the time were hampered by an extremely poor user interface, and Apple Macintosh that could perform at the same level as the Archimedes would have been much more expensive. As good as RISC OS was, it was not perfect. Some of the design decisions were somewhat curtailed by its backwards compatibility with Arthur, which had in turn been based on BBC MOS. For one thing, the multitasking of RISC OS was based on a cooperative model, much like contemporary versions of Mac OS and Microsoft Windows. In a cooperative system, the applications themselves have to manage some of the multitasking process. The net result is a system that isn't quite as smooth and crash resistant that it should be, because the whole system is at the mercy of a badly written or crashing application. Modern operating systems, such as Linux and all versions of Windows, from Windows 95 onwards, use preemptive multitasking, a superior system. Even the Amiga OS of 1985 used preemption. A myth seems to pervade within some retro gaming circles that the Acorn Archimedes didn't have many good games. It did. It just didn't have as many as the Amiga and the Atari ST. One of the main problems was gaming on the Archimedes was that, due to the shoestring budget upon which they were produced, many of the games featured graphics that were drawn by the programmers. The approach, which was the way that most 8-bit video games had been created, occurred at a time when Amiga's titles were often created by a team of designers and artists. Visually speaking, there were a couple of gems, but in practice, users sometimes didn't get to see the full benefit of amazing specs. The classic period of Acorn Archimedes gaming existed between 1987 and about 1993. As with the Amiga, most video games were designed to run on the basic, lowest common denominator hardware, although a number of the final games were capable of taking advantage of the extra facilities of later hardware. Acorn computers had enjoyed a massive lead over the competition upon the machine's release, but unfortunately it didn't aggressively defend that lead, and the price was always slightly more than the competition in any given market. For example, in 1993 Acorn made a final attempt to secure some of the home gaming market with a single box computer called the Acorn A3010. Unfortunately, the equivalent machine from Commodore, the Amiga A1200, had far superior graphics, 
a great deal more software and was about £100 cheaper. Quite a significant difference in the market. By the early 90s, the hardware releases were starting to become rather lacking. Models based around faster processors were periodically released, but the graphics system was hardly upgraded until the 1994 release of Risk PC, the final Archimedes workstation. To outside observers, it seemed the company was resting on its laurels, a mistake that Commodore would soon repeat. Losing ground on all sides, Acorn shut its workstation division in 1999. 